Self-esteem is the internal is the internal awareness of one's own preciousness. It's the internal knowing that one has inherent worth. And there's something very specific about that. It's it's that and the internal awareness of one's preciousness in the midst of one's humanity. What this means is that Self-love is about knowing that your humanity does not make you worth less or better than. I have been um, teaching this uh, subject to many, many patients over the years. I have been working hard on it myself. I have spent lots of time thinking about this subject and trying to get people to understand this concept. And you know what? Of all the things I've taught, of all the lectures I've given, this particular subject baffles people. One of the ways I get their attention is to tell them this, that when it comes to self-esteem or self-love, you're either doing it or you're not doing it. What I mean by that, I'll, I'll bring up something that happened years ago that really got my attention. I was, I was doing a... Uh, I was training a bunch of therapists in Texas one time, and I, I uh, spent a lot of time with them in, in this. I think the subject was self-esteem anyway. And it, it came time for me to leave. I had to catch an airplane, so I really had to leave. And this lady raised her hand, and she said, oh, Pia, just, just one more thing I want to ask you. I said, well, what is it? And she said, well, I want to know how I can raise my client's sense of esteem. And I said to her, if you are in that concept, if you are believing you can raise it, like the thing goes up and down, you really don't understand the nature of self-esteem. It either is in existence or it isn't. You either are valuing yourself or you're not. It cannot be raised up and down. It's a constant. And it's, it's about keeping in your mind, about being mindful that when you landed on the planet, when you were born, you came into the world, you came onto the planet with all the value you needed. And that value is equal to anybody else's value. One of the things about it, to, oh, I guess two things that I would mention right now, and, and that is, um, if you look around and you look at other people, one of the things that you see is that we're different. No, no matter what you're doing, look at anybody, you'll notice that we're all different. We think differently, we dress differently, we look differently. We have different levels of intelligence, different levels of beauty, uh, different levels of gifts, um, all kinds of things. We're, we're all very, very different. And one of the keys to understanding self-esteem is that those differences never affect one's inherent worth. They're just differences. In my own personal growth around this issue, one of the things I've learned is that as I look at others and I notice all these differences between me and, and them, that I have learned to look at the difference and do two things with it if it's something that's really remarkable to me. What I do is I use the difference to learn something or I look at that difference and appreciate whatever it is about them that's really remarkable instead of using it to make myself feel worthless. I think that that is probably one of the indicators that, uh, that a person is a pretty healthy person when instead of using differences to make themselves feel better than or less than, uh, one simply observes and appreciates and learns from instead of making it just a huge issue. Now, self-esteem is, is based on unconditional acceptance of self as valuable despite mistakes, failures, flaws, uh, losses, or any other kind of circumstance that is negative. The idea here is that you are valuable because you exist. And achievement and beauty and money and social position, etc., has nothing to do with your inherent work. That's more about the differences. Inherent in uh, worth is based in existence. Um, and, and what I've been saying is that having a sense of value 
has to do with whether you're paying attention or in the knowing that, it, that you have it, that it's there. Now one thing I want to note uh, here, and I read it in Matthew McKay's book, Self-Esteem, and by the way, that book is an excellent book um, to read because he, he makes many very, very important points about it, and he has lots of other information about it, so I recommend you read it. But anyway, what he said in there, or I'm kind of paraphrasing a little bit, he said, feeling occasionally uncertain about one's own value is a, is a fact of your own humanity. Uh, questioning your self-esteem is a natural consequence of your own consciousness. In other words, when you have it, uh, you'll know, when you really have it, you'll see that you'll have it and then you won't have it, and then you'll have it and then you won't have it. What I just said, what Matthew McKay was saying is that it's normal to have it kind of come and go like that. In the process of recovery, though, we have it more than we don't have it. And we get better and better at knowing it than getting into the illusion. And believe me, these things are illusions that were worth less or better than. Now, what I want to do is some board work here. And what I want to do is show you how, how it's actually created. At least how I think it's created, anyway. Now, how it's created is that it starts with a thought. See, self-esteem is actually a thought. It's the beginning of self-esteem. The thought is, I matter as I am. See, and I just made a mistake here. I, I used the cursive, and then I used, uh, what, what do they call that? Um, anyway, the first thing you learn when you learn how to write. Anyway, so I'm now really screwing up now. So I'm making a mistake, and I'm being in my humanity, and you know what? That I made that mistake and that I'm on tape and you're watching that does not affect my level of self-esteem. What I've done here is make a mistake. That doesn't mean I'm worth less or better than or they don't know what I'm doing. I just did that because I'm human. Anyway, so I'm in the midst of my humanity here. I've made a mistake. My thought is and always is, as much as I possibly can do it, is I matter in spite of the fact that I've made a mistake. I matter as I am. I matter in the midst of my humanity. I have inherent worth in the midst of my humanity. I am valuable as I am. So in order to experience self-esteem or self-love, you have to have that as a constant understanding in your head. What that will produce, since thoughts produce emotions or feelings, first feelings and then emotions. And by the way, a feeling is a physical sensation in your body. The physical sensation of, of self-esteem or self-love is warmth and swelling in your heart. Interesting, huh? Warmth and swelling in your heart. You know, you know um, probably warmth is a word that, that you want to remember here. I know that probably all of you at one time or another felt warmth for another person, or you might say you felt compassion for another person you felt a heart connection to another person. You felt your heart opening in warmth to another person. That's the physical sensation of knowing that another person mattered as they, as they exist. Anyway, the physical sensation of love, the feeling of love is warmth and swelling in your heart area. Now, your brain will then tell you that that is self-love or self-esteem. Which and self-love or self-esteem is the emotion or the word, the emotional word we use to describe this physical sensation. And then what happens is that thought combined with the sensation drives one be one's behavior. So one's behavior then would reflect that you either love yourself or you love another human being. So let's just let's just. Um, look at how this might pan out. I'll, just, I'll use an example of what happened to me last night. Um, I got home late at night, and one of the things I know is if, if in this Arizona weather, I wind up getting hot and then I get sticky and all that sort of thing. If I try to go to bed and sleep when I feel all sticky, I won't be able to sleep and I'll have a miserable night. 
Now, I got home and it was late and I knew I had to do this taping the next day and all that sort of stuff. I'll just fling myself in bed and try to get some sleep. And then I said, hey, wait a minute. That's not going to take good care of me. And the next thought was, I'm worth taking care of here. And so what I, what I did is I changed my behavior. Instead of, instead of throwing myself in bed and trying to sleep, I jumped in the bathtub, took a quick bath so I felt better, and then got in bed. The behavior reflected the thought that I matter, and I matter enough to stop get myself comfortable so that I can sleep. I spent the time and engaged the behavior that indicated that I really care about myself. I care so much that I take care of myself. 